what began as a rumor in her high school hallway had landed Sarah Jones in a police interrogation room. This is obviously a voluntary interview, okay? Questioned about sex with one of her students, Cody York. The rumor that, um, that we had been told and that uh, we are wanting to clarify with you is that you and Cody have slept together or have, have had sex together. Is that true? No. Have you ever slept with Cody? No. I was shocked and scared because I knew at that point in time they had a misconstrued situation and that they thought something had happened that did not. But prosecutors were ready to charge her. In Kentucky, the age of legal consent is 16. Cody was 17. So even if he and Sarah had sex, it wasn't statutory rape. Instead, prosecutors used another law that says teachers can't have sex with students under 18. A grand jury indicted Sarah Jones on first-degree sexual abuse and for using those text messages to lure him in. I didn't wrap my mind around it. I didn't even cry at first. It was deeper than that. There were no tears. And then my mom so calmly told me, and I've been charged too. And I said, wait, wait a minute, for what? Cheryl Jones, devoted mother, school principal, had also been indicted, accused of tampering with evidence, trying to cover up her daughter's crimes by texting Cody York to get rid of his cell phone before the cops came. I had no idea I was even considered for any kind of an indictment. It, it totally floored me. They turned themselves in, and suddenly a new family portrait mother-daughter mug shots, both thrown in the county jail. You were in jail with your daughter? I was in jail with my daughter. That's, you know, that's not one of the things that we had on our bucket list. The Jones family scraped up the $80,000 cash bond, and hours later, they were out. I understand how severe a sex abuse crime case is, um, but I haven't been convicted of anything. Sarah was placed on house arrest on an ankle bracelet, police monitoring her every move, even a walk to the mailbox. It's really frustrating um, to be, to not have any restraints at all and then to go completely restrained is very difficult because it's just like, sometimes you just, it's like cabin fever, you just want to get out. But we're getting ready to lose the range, so, so I can't me, go too much farther. Tell me when to stop. Uh, we get about right here. Um, Even when Sarah stayed in range, the alarm would sometimes go off. And um, I'm getting a violation. Sorry. Right, right now? Yeah. Sorry. What? I'm here. Everybody can vouch for that. Um, well, why don't you keep that close okay, so everything Thanks. stays okay? We had been talking about the case, and Sarah continued to maintain her innocence. What people think right now is that he was a student, and we just got involved in a sexual, sexual relationship. Not true. Let me play devil's advocate. Prosecutors are in the business of winning cases. Prosecutors don't care about high school rumors in general. Why bring a case against you if they don't have the hard evidence to put you away? I think that they thought they had an ace in the hole and that they knew that this was true and they were gonna run with it. I can assure you now, after, after the fact, seeing the evidence, knowing what they have, knowing what they know, that they should have never taken it this far. Prosecutors did have those texts, but what they didn't have was a statement from the boy, Cody, a major hurdle for prosecutor Sarah Farmer. The victim wasn't cooperating. Correct or his parents. That makes your job a lot tougher. It does. It makes it tougher to prove a sex crime when we don't have someone to say we had sex. What's more, in a bizarre twist, Cody York's parents were coming to court hearings and sitting with Sarah's parents. And not only was it lack of cooperation, it was adamant support for Sarah Jones. That certainly impacted our case. And then there was the unspoken problem. I don't think that society looked at him as a victim the way they might if it was a young female student and a much older man. He may be getting high fives in the hallways. Absolutely. If everyone is saying, drop this case, the victim is saying drop the case, Sarah Jones is saying drop the case, everyone seems to be fine. Why not just drop it and move on to maybe something more serious? Why waste taxpayer money on that? It's my job. I'm a prosecutor. 
and I'm not hired by victims. I'm not hired to represent any one particular person. I represent the citizens of the community. On the motion, so... She wasn't the only one preparing for battle. Sarah's defense lawyer, Eric Dieters, was ready for a fight, too. He calls himself the bulldog. They're obsessed, in my humble opinion, with getting her. She's a Bengal cheerleader, so they have their preconceptions of, you know, she thinks she's so popular. She goes to, the, she's cheering at NFL games and da-da-da. She thinks she can get away with this. We're going to show her. And they get obsessed with just trying to get somebody instead of just letting it go. Just let it go. Prosecutors aren't backing down. They will. <laughs> you think they will? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've gotten teased a little bit that I have these aces up my sleeve. I've used the word aces. But Do you? We, well, oh, yeah, we got aces. One of them, Sarah Jones herself. Not just a client anymore. The court allowed Sarah to take a job working for Dieters as his legal secretary. She even wrote motions for her own case. You've read every page in these files. Yes, this is my life, so... Um, who's going to fight harder to save their life than yourself? But Sarah's life was in limbo. Actually, I'm exiting my 21st week of home incarceration. She revealed her fears in personal video diaries for Dateline. Everything's coming to a close and coming to a head. Um, so I, the nerves are, I'm beyond terrified as to what the unknown is. Her trial was around the corner, both sides armed and ready. But hold on, Sarah was about to shock everyone in open court. I will now take responsibility for my actions. 